Hi all, uh, I'm Zizan. So for the last 150 days, I've been writing a short poem every single day. Um, through writing these poems, I've been reflecting about three major themes of things that I've been trying to incorporate into my life. And they've really helped me become a happier and more productive person and a more effective leader. So I want to share those with you today. Um, but first, specifically, um, I've been writing haiku every day. Um, for those that don't know, a haiku is a type of poem. It's a type of Japanese poem. And the basic rule for it is that it has three lines. The first line has five syllables, five, 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 five. The second line has seven syllables, seven, 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 seven. And the third has five syllables again, five, 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 five. So it's very short. And what a haiku does is it forces the writer to really distill what they're trying to say into like only its barest essence. And that's why I enjoy writing. Now, it started off actually as, oops, too fast. <laughs> it started off actually as a joke. Um, my housemate Andrew had written a haiku to his girlfriend for her birthday. And so on his birthday, I wrote him one back. I wrote this to him. So my very first haiku in this kind of series of 150 is, happy birthday, man. Hipster housemates forever. You have a large head. And he has a large head. Um, I think he's once told me that his head is like five standard deviations larger than the normal person's head. <laughs> so. Um, so it started off as a joke, but I actually really enjoyed writing it. So I started writing it every day. Um, and every day I take about 10 to 15 minutes to write a kind of a short haiku and I publish it onto my Facebook. Um, and very quickly, um, the subject matter changed from jokes towards um, things that have been on my mind, things that I've been thinking of my, uh, about, and things that I wanted to write as a bit of a note to self. So um, I started to write about topics on my mind, and I looked back and I realized, hey, I'm actually writing about like, sometimes the same thing. Like I'm writing about three major themes, as I said. And these things are things that I want to remind myself about um, to live a better life. So now I want to share those with you. The first is um, choose gratitude for the small things, too. And one of the exemplary haiku of this would be, one simple pleasure, a bitter kiss on my lips, good morning, coffee. So I love having morning coffee. I, I really you know, I try to have one every day or every day in the morning. And um, I'm trying to turn this daily habit into a, a, a daily habit where I can um, reflect on and appreciate the smaller things in life. So basically, every day in the morning, I head down to my local cafe, and I order a coffee, and I sit down, and I you know, enjoy the coffee, and I, and I listen to music. Um, and there's two ways to kind of think about what I'm doing at this moment. The first is like, well, yeah, so what? Like, you go to a cafe. Like, everyone can go to a cafe. There's cafes everywhere. You go every day. It's just coffee, right? And that's true. Like, it, it is just coffee. Um, but the other way to look at it is through the lens of gratitude. And, you know, try to be explicit and look for the hidden daily things that are kind of amazing about every single moment. So essentially, you know, I could be uh, grateful instead of just thinking this is nothing. I could be grateful for the fact that um, I have this awesome job and I, live, uh, you know, I work in the city, so I am surrounded by cafes. Um, I could be grateful for the fact that I'm healthy and I have ears that work so I can appreciate this awesome music. Um, I could be grateful for the fact that I live in Melbourne and it's like a beautiful city. I could be grateful that the barista remembers my name or that the barista like smiled at me. You know, something as simple as that. There's like a million and one different little miracles about the day that actually I could be aware of or, you know, um, explicitly be aware of. And so both of these are true. Like both, you know, yes, it's every day, but yes, like these things are also true. Like these things are pretty amazing. So in the end, it's a choice. It's a choice about like how you want to see the situation. And I would suggest that when you choose to see it the second way, you're actually training your mind to not get used to and take for granted the amazing things that are around us every day. All of us have such lucky lives and we should kind of, you know, be grateful for them. And it makes you a happier person. So um, I want to make a note that I think about these things as small things. Um, there are also big things in life too, like, you know, like a new relationship or like buying a new car or getting a new job or a promotion or um, all these kinds of things. There are big things in life too. Um, and they're worthy of gratitude too. But 
the reason I focus on small things is because these big things, they happen like, and we pay attention to them anyway. We're already grateful for them. And they don't happen every day. The thing about the small things about every day is that they happen every day. So no matter how the big things in your life are going, like maybe you get fired, right? Um, no matter how the big things in your life are going, no one can ever take away the fact that, you know, within every single day, there are a million small little things that you can be grateful for. So the next time you're having like a bad day, or the next time you're having a good day, or any day at all, I hope you can take one moment to just, it only takes one moment, right? Just to pause for a second and take a breath in and just say, how great is this? So that's what I mean when I say one simple pleasure. A bitter kiss on my lips, good morning coffee. Number two, choose courage and vulnerability over fear. Courage sheds armor, both fortune's gifts and curses faced with open heart. So I'm gonna tell you guys a secret, um, or you know, something that I haven't told anyone else, which is I was like almost gonna withdraw from giving this talk. I, I almost like kind of just said, ah, this is not for me. Um, why? Because I was like scared of like getting on stage and failing. I had seen these TED Talks and these amazing speakers that are here tonight and, you know, like Derek Sivers and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I'm not them. Like, you know, they're like experts in their field. They have like all these years of experience. They've like written books. They're like started companies around all the things they're talking about. Um, I'm not a published poet. I'm not like a Zen master. Um, I'm just me, right? Um, but again, like, I realized, just like with gratitude, I had, at this point, like a choice, right? I had a choice about how I saw this. And the first way I could do it was I could let that fear take over. And most of you would probably like, know already, like, the easy way to let fear take over is to run. Like, if you run away from a challenge, even though you really kind of think it's something good um, because you just fear it, um, you know, that's, that's letting fear take over. So that's pretty obvious. But the more subtle way that fear takes over us sometimes is that we allow fear to force us to put a whole bunch of armor on. And what do I mean when I say armor? Uh, what I mean is that you, you know, fall back on something familiar and defend yourself. You hedge your bets a little bit. So for me, like for this talk, I could have dug out an old talk I'd done about technology, something that I had like the credibility to talk about, you know, something I could do like in my sleep. And I'd be up here on stage like on autopilot just talking about that. But I'd be under like so many layers of familiarity that I wouldn't really be, you know, I'd be on autopilot, I wouldn't be paying attention, I wouldn't be enjoying the experience, and I wouldn't be learning. So instead, I kind of, I guess I come out to you here um, naked. Like not naked naked, I'm sparing you guys that horror. But um, naked from the perspective of like, I'm talking about a topic that I am not an expert in, I'm still learning my own way, but, um, it's something that I'm really interested in. It's, it's something that I want to share with you guys, and it's the, the topic that I'm like really interested in right now. So, um, you know, that's what I think kind of being open and, and, and having courage is. I think having courage is not um, obviously just running away, um, but having courage is also not, you know, putting on so much armor that you're so shielded from the, the smells, the sights, the feelings of like being in the fray, you know, that you don't actually learn anything. You know, that's not courage either. Um, you know, courage is, is just putting yourself out there, um, acknowledging that there's a risk, you know, and there's a vulnerability, and just pushing through it anyway. So, like, here I am. I'm on stage. I'm talking about this thing. I'm learning a lot about how to give a good TED Talk about a topic that I'm not an expert in. I'm figuring out whether or not I'm actually any good at public speaking. Um, and, you know, this could be, like, a good talk. This could be the worst talk I ever give in my life. Apologies if it is. Um, but, you know, either way, that's kind of out of my hands now. I've at least made the choice to kind of put myself out there and kind of, I guess, like fight the good fight. So um, that's what I think, you know, having courage is about. So for you guys, like, don't pull your punches. If you really want to go for something, go in there fully, you know, with an open heart. Um, you know, don't let this, don't let fear kind of force you to put this armor on and like insulate yourself from the experience. And it might pan out, you know, and that's good for you. And if it doesn't pan out, you know, that, that sucks for you a little bit. But ultimately, as long as you um, are in it and you learn from that experience, that's actually the most important thing. So that's, I guess, me up after all. <laughs> so this is what I mean when I say courage sheds armor, both fortunes, gifts, and curses faced with open heart. Finally, I want to talk to you guys about choosing humility uh, over ego. I slay the ego. 
everyone is my teacher, and I learn so fast. When I started my new job, uh, I was a couple of months in, and I thought I was doing all right. I thought, you know, hey, like, I'm settled in, and I'm, I'm doing good work, you know, and I'm, I'm bringing value um, to the people around me. So like, this is good. Um, and I thought that until um, one of my colleagues, he took me aside, and he said these words to me. He said, Z, you're very smart, but nobody wants to work with you because you're so damn arrogant and rude. And my reaction was like this. I was like, what? What? Like, rude? Arrogant? Like, I don't mean to be rude or arrogant. Like, I was furious. Like, what? Who says that? Like, this is obviously just you, like, misinterpreting what I say. Like, I'm not arrogant. You know, what's wrong with being smart anyway? Like, this is all your problem. And I was, like, furious. I was like, ah. You know, how could I have been so misunderstood? And I spent the rest of, like, the next couple of hours really, like, upset about this. You know, feeling misjudged and misunderstood. But once again, I realized I had a choice about how to see this. Now... The reality is, the thing that I can't change um, is, um, even though I don't mean to be um, rude or arrogant, um, my colleague has given me the feedback that that's how he perceives me. So I can't take away how he feels. I can't say, hey, you shouldn't feel that and like, don't, right? Because that's how he feels. Like, I can't take that away. So I only have a choice about how I respond to that feedback. Now, the first way I can respond is this, right? I can like, cross my arms and be like, yeah, you know, I can make up this story about, like, hey, that's all you. Like, you're just, like, you just don't get it, right? You're, like, just misunderstanding the things I say, and you're, like, you know, feeling threatened by me for some weird reason, and, like, you know, you have to change. I push that all on him. So you have to change. And that preserves my ego. I'm like, yes, I'm still perfect. I'm awesome. I'm Z. I don't have to do a thing, right? But when I do that, I'm the one that um, holds on to the anger. Like, I'm the one that feels wrong and has to hold on to that. And I'm the one that kind of, like, feels this kind of, like, you know, hate towards my colleague, um, and, I don't, and I don't change. And when you compare that to the flip side, I can, like, accept responsibility for this, right? I can say, hmm, okay, thanks for that feedback. You know, this doesn't mean that I'm a bad person, by the way, right? This means that um, I have things to learn just like everyone else. And I can accept that feedback and say, well, yeah, okay, I understand. I didn't intend to be rude. I didn't intend to be arrogant. But obviously, I don't communicate clearly enough, or I don't communicate in the right way, that I've been misperceived as rude or arrogant. I need to work on that. And when I do that, when I think about it that way, I feel at peace with my colleague. I feel grateful. I say, well, yeah, this, this person's awesome. They gave me this feedback and gave me this opportunity to grow, right? So, um, you know, when I do that, I feel, I feel much happier about that. And so in the end, I'm not, like, trying to get bogged down by, like, uh, you know, who, whose fault is it? Like, is it his fault, my fault? Um, you know, who's right, who's wrong? I don't really care about kind of talking about that. I just want to talk about, look, okay, which, which of these two paths is going to give me the maximum chance to grow and learn as a person? And, you know, for me, that's always the, the, the path of kind of taking responsibility and taking humility. So I want to kind of make the same offer to you guys. Like, the next time you run into some kind of hardship in your life, in a project or in a particular relationship that you have, um, you can get bogged down and, and, and turn it into like a who's blame game, pointing fingers, who has to change. Um, but I would actually offer that if instead you take it as an opportunity to learn, that's actually going to set you up in the long term to be a, like a much better person. So I slay the ego. Everyone is my teacher, and I learn so fast. So closing up, write daily haiku. Reflect, be grateful, be brave, be humble, and learn fast. Funnily enough, uh, writing daily haiku allows me to practice these three themes like almost daily. So every day I get to be grateful that I get 10 to 15 minutes to write something fun and creative. Um, then I get to deal with the kind of funny feelings of fear and vulnerability about putting my work out there and publishing it and like letting other people like critique it and stuff like that. Um, and they do. Like sometimes I put it out there and people don't like it. People give me like negative feedback. And instead of, you know, and I get the opportunity, that instead of letting this be like about my ego and being like, oh, you know, you just don't get it, um, I can be like, oh, okay, what can I learn from this? So this is how writing daily haiku has um, helped me be uh, more grateful, be more courageous, um, be more humble, and live a happier and more productive life. And I wish the same to you guys as well. So after a talk on haiku, there's really only one, only one way to really end it, which is, I'm so honored. Thank you, TEDxUnimob. I hope you had fun. <laughs>